standing up in McKinney. This is According to Callus. It is episode 349 coming out on February the 6th. And it is a McKinney Monday. <clears throat> Some highlights are going to be the endorsement from the mayor, the direction of the city council, school board follies, TEC complaints, and what's next. Before I get into this, let me remind you that you can do me the honorable favor by liking, subscribing, following the podcast, sharing the show, and if you're particularly impressed or happy, you can go and do a comment or rating. Help me out here. We continue to grow. We got to get the word out. We are making a difference. Yes, me and my two listeners were being heard. So here we go on with the show. It was brought to my attention uh, sometime last week that my esteemed mayor decided to endorse by name two of the three people running for re-election for the school board. Basically saying, and I'm going to paraphrase somebody else's mm, recitation of what was said. So this is strictly third hand, but it's no surprise. They're doing a great job and I strongly support what they're doing. Okay. Now I'm sure I've talked about this before. I I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Uh, they're all about the status quo. So my sincere hope, my prayer is that that endorsement will mean as much in McKinney this time around as it meant in Frisco in their school board election or in prosper for their school board election, because apparently not only does my esteemed mayor think he should run the city, he should run the school districts in two of the neighboring cities. I'm really uncomfortable with this. The idea <laughs> that I've had passed on to me several times by other elected officials are something along the line of you should stay in your own lane. <laughs> now, I don't know if I 100% subscribe to this because quite frankly, I'm more than a little disappointed about the many, many blind eyes that get turned to various things that occur at different levels of government by the other levels of government. But I certainly can understand and appreciate why the municipal city council ought not be inf interfering with the school district or mm, putting their thumb on there. <clears throat> that being said, it doesn't bother me. I don't think it's a conflict of interest. I don't see it as a problem because in theory, the county government should partner with the school districts and the city uh, government and vice versa. Likewise, the city government and the school districts ought to partner whenever possible. And then all of those entities should be partnering with the state government since they are all creations of the state government. But what I find a little humorous <clears throat> is that while my esteemed mayor often retorts that the principled few that show up and routinely uh, confront the school district and or the city council, he paints them with a broad brush saying that they're, you know, basically partisan hacks, that they're ideolo ideological frauds, just various other insults, basically just saying that what they think doesn't matter and everything that they do and say is based simply off the idea that because of their ideology, their ideas, their internal ideas, think one thing that they automatically will do the other. Well, that may not be an entirely out of line critique, but that goes both ways. It's called projection. So when the same aforementioned mayor traveled to D.C. to go hang out with Pete Buttigieg and listen to the president, of course, that was not political. No, no, no. They only focused on issues. They only focused on problem solving. Never mind every problem that they perceived was based on their political biases. Never mind that every policy initiative that they put forward was based upon their political biases and their desires to control people 
and mandate certain things from the federal level. And oh yes, of course, they'll sweeten the pot by giving us some money, which was already our money that they took from us in the first place and then are returning to us to make us do certain other things. But that was all non-political and not even partisan because, you know, they're only worried about policies. Again, what planet does somebody come up with that idea on? Certainly not Earth, certainly not Texas, certainly not Collin County or in McKinney. Would anybody think that anything that goes on in D.C. is separate or above politics? Come on, man. (laughs) So let's just say I doubt his judgment on that matter and many other matters. That being said, somewhere along the line, he's done some things that I agree with or think are net positive. I appreciate the fact that he's very interested in improving Highway 5. I think the fact that, you know, they're going to do something at the airport, even though it's going to cost an arm and a leg, at least in theory, at some point in the distant future, it might break even and might actually be a nice thing to have, but that's going to require a large amount of debt and hope and a prayer that the economy and the growth will continue at a pace to where that will merit it, that expense and debt. Uh, Frisco's finding out the hard way that doesn't always work that way. So why do I bring this up? Well, this has to do directly with the direction of the city council. See, we're coming up on those term limits. So essentially the mayor has a little over two years left. And really and truly, after this election cycle, he is a lame duck. Now, presumably, he's going to anoint his successor. And if he himself doesn't do it, it'll be the people that pull his strings, right? The McKinney team or whatever other group is going to finance the next mayoral candidate that will be put upon us because they know what's best for us. You see, they come from the same mindset that these enlightened few know what's best for the rest of us and they should dictate what we get to do and how we do it in our general lives. I, for one, am not a big fan of this, but at least can see some value that somebody with a longer vision or a bigger view might offer. But if you're giving it as a option or you're presenting it as this is what is available as opposed to shoving it down your throat. Those are two different things, and that's not exactly what's happening. It's more of a shove it down your throat as opposed to a legitimate decision-making process. And I want to point out that for all my concern regarding Mr. Beller, i got to say I'm pretty impressed with the fact that he is constantly having people put out the fact that he is having open discussion time, that he's willing to meet with his constituents, willing to fill them in on information and bring that to them at a time and a place that he's available, but it's available to the general public. And he he's encouraging that. Now I'm fairly certain that he and I are not going to be on the same page. I think he and I actually do correctly observe similar problems. I think our solutions might be different, but I got to applaud the guy who is potentially my political enemy, right? For making this step and doing the right thing, in my opinion. I hope that the other council members will follow suit. I don't expect much out of any of them. Now, the mayor's really good about putting on a show and real happy with you as long as you agree with him. But I imagine that uh, Mr. Beller is actually probably uh, used to people disagreeing with him and used to having an open discussion and doesn't take offense at it and doesn't take it as a personal affront. So I, kudos to Mr. Beller. I just, I had to put it out there and you know, uh, there is an election we're going to have, uh, district two It was going to be an open seat, but, uh, Mr. Patrick decided to, uh, step down from the at large seat and run for district two, Mr. Cloutier. Good luck to you. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to necessarily endorse, but I'm just saying that I've been generally pleased with the representation he's been providing. And I hope he will follow suit with Mr. Beller and 
choose to meet with his constituents on a semi-regular basis and discuss issues that are going on in the city for those of us that aren't actively involved in everything at the city level. I, I think that's a great idea, and I applaud them for doing that, and I hope he follows suit. Uh, the other one's up for re-election, or actually, well, then the at-large seat becomes an open race. And then District 4, which is Mr. Franklin, uh, well, I'm not sure what he's going to do. I assume you'll run for re-election. I was hoping we'd have somebody run against him because, quite frankly, I don't think anybody in office should run unopposed for re-election unless they're just that awesome. And quite frankly, none of, nobody is. All right, so let's transition over to the school board follies. I've already told you about the weigh-in from the uh, mayoral side. And again, I feel the need to have to say this from time to time. Everything that I say in this program is strictly my opinion on the matter and my understanding of the facts on the ground. So if I get something wrong, I assure you it's not intentional. And I welcome you to let me know whether you text, email, or call me. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to be corrected. So that being said, I'm really curious how it is that the school district has found the time and the money to put out promo videos for current members of the school board in an election cycle. How is that not an electioneering? How is that not a violation within the Texas election code? Hmm. Is somebody going to file a complaint? Inquiring minds want to know. If you have a child in the school district, didn't you find it a little odd that it was school board appreciation month last month during an election cycle? I mean, I realize that a lot of these people do put time, money, and effort to serve the public at large. And I do realize that some of them have done a better job than others. But I am fully aware that at least some of them are way past the age of retirement. Some of them, quite frankly, I'm not sure why they're serving because clearly they show no interest in what the parents or the grandparents that show up to discuss issues with them think or say or do because it doesn't go along with whatever their policy or priority is. Now, you can say, like our esteemed mayor does, that these people are hacks and dismiss them as a unruly few and they don't reflect the community as a whole, and maybe you're right, but we won't know until after the election. But one would suggest that when you are defending pornography in the schools, when you are protecting critical race theory and soft socialism and social emotional learning, and when you're defending that and siding with somebody that is confused whether or not they believe in Satan or not, or they worship Satan or not, or they're just plain atheistic, meaning there is no God. I'm not really sure that I'm super enthusiastic on the mindset or the mentality between those people that are supposed to be looking out for our children or your grandchildren uh, in their ability to discern right from wrong and proper policy when they openly support these things and protect bad behavior. I myself have limited interest in fighting a battle that quite frankly doesn't affect me anymore. And I kind of think it's a little out of place for me who has no children in the school district right now to spend a lot of time and effort. But I applaud those that do have children in the district or have grandchildren in the district taking their time and their efforts to stand up and and do the right thing in their own mind, to to, to stand in the gap, right? To oppose these things. Now, I understand not everybody feels the same about certain subjects. I understand not everybody's in complete agreement on a lot of things. I understand that the vast majority of the people do believe that education should be nonpartisan, should be apolitical, and should be open to all. Okay. I understand that that's your theory. I understand that's what you want and desire for a school district, but I'm here to tell you there is no such thing. By definition, education is putting forth a worldview. By definition, education is about training up the next generation. By definition, 
Education is imparting wisdom and value into people that are at some point going to be adults. And when you're shaping and twisting people's minds at that young age where they don't even understand what it is they're being taught, it's very hard to be values neutral. It's very hard to pretend that all things are equal. That causes all sorts of problems long term. But for you to act like somebody that's standing up and reasserting something that worked for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, is somehow grown three horns and a fifth eye and uh, they're from a different planet, I'm suggesting maybe you're the problem. I'm suggesting somebody that would go to the length to hate their children enough to want to pervert them, that they would hate their children enough that they would want to abuse them. Oh, you're not sure where I'm going with this? Well, when you put upon affirming treatment to a child, that is not loving your child. That is abuse of your child. I would say you hate your child. If your child has a mental issue real or imagined, to where they're not sure whether or not they have the correct plumbing for what their mind says, you ought to at least wait until they go through puberty and become mature enough to determine whether or not, hey, uh, this affliction that I think I have is worthy of investigating and maybe I need to go uh, take some surgeries so I can pretend to be something that I'm not by birth. Uh, As an adult you know what? I'm not going to stand in your way. I shouldn't have to pay for it. But if you want to go do that to yourself, whatever, dude, or whatever lady, but to impute that on your child, to tell your child that, Oh, well, maybe you feel like a woman today. Well, that's good. That's good. Little Johnny. Let's go have you see a doctor so we can destroy your ability to reproduce for your entire life. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. You're showing love for your child there. But hey, that's okay. We're going to defend that at the school board level. We're going to defend that at the state legislative level. We're going to pretend that it's bad, but we're not going to do anything about it because we don't want to offend somebody. Well, I'm really curious how it is that 0.7% of the population dictates terms for the rest of the 99.3% of the population. How does that work? Just because we've allowed enough children to have their minds warped that they're not really sure what they are or what they think anymore, how are we doing them a favor? Now, yes, I know there's a certain percentage of population out there that rejects Christianity. Okay, fine. But at least in Christianity, you're taught that you're made in the image of God and you're either a male or a female and you were designed that way and you're going to serve a purpose and you have value. And your creator loves you. But when you take that away, when you strip that away and you tell them they were created from mistakes of genetics, when you tell them that they are nothing more than mm, the prodigy of apes, or if you want to go further back, amoebas, you're taking away any value that they might have ascribed to themselves. Now, I realize that maybe this is stretching things just a little bit. But let me ask you, (laughs) I didn't even watch this, but apparently the Grammys has chosen a side here, right? The the movie cinema theater world has chosen a side here. The, The government has chosen a side here. The perverts of the world have chosen a side here. And you as a parent or a grandparent Who do you think has the best interests for your child or your grandchild? Oh, do you need a moment to think about this? Do you or your family or church have, I don't know, more value ascribed to your children or your grandchildren than that these other people might have? Do you think maybe you ought to have a little more say about what little Johnny or little Mary is taught and learns in the school district? Am I asking for too much out of you to pay attention and be involved? I don't think so. And when it comes down to the school board, quite frankly, and we've got the uh, aforementioned mayor saying they're doing such a great job 
and he supports them 100%. Well, what part does, what part is he uh, most enthusiastic about? The part where they're protecting pornography in the school, the part where they're pretending that boys are girls and girls are boys, the part where they're telling white people they should hate themselves because they're white, or the part where they objectively, objectively support some form of socialism. Which part is it? Now, I realize I'm asking a lot from a New Jersey Yankee to come down to Texas and become more Texian, become more Tejano-like, if you will. And I realize that setting aside your Yankee tendency is to push upon your personal values on everybody around you. You might be asking too much of that person. I realize that. But then I reflect on the people that serve on the board, and it is my understanding the majority of them are, if not native-born Texans, people that have been here for quite some time, and at least subscribe to being Christian and or Baptists. And I've commented on this before where I think maybe they're fake Baptists or fake Republicans because I don't see anything about what they're doing here that aligns with those values, those policies that Christianity or even Republicanism might put forward. But hey, that's okay because the progressive Yankees are telling us it's all good. This is going to be so much better for you. And yeah, we're going to give it to you even if you don't like it. (laughs) How does that fit in your worldview? So, my buddy Kyle had a, a little chat over the weekend and he ran in some issues where uh, some local mm, activists were trying to thwart his conversation that he was going to be putting on at a Restore the Republic event. And they felt the need to call several venues and lie about my buddy Kyle. And when the lying wasn't enough, then they just made threats about the event. And apparently between the threats and the lying, they were able to get what they wanted out of two of the three venues. Now I got to ask you, who wants to restrict the first amendment rights? Who is looking to censor the other group? Somebody that says, Hey, these books or these curriculum ideas are not appropriate for young children. They're not appropriate to be presented in any way, shape, or form to children of a certain age or in this uh, venue. So they're not saying you can't do it at all. They're not saying that they ought to be banned. They're certainly not asking for books to be burned. But the very same people who cry and moan on how this is an offensive thing to them and that these people are haters are then going around trying to get them canceled, trying to prevent them from being able to speak the truth. They're trying to prevent them from being able to articulate their point of view or have a conversation with other people. Methinks they doth protesteth too much. I think they're projecting their own values upon us when they're claiming that we want to do these things when they, in fact, are the ones that are guilty of doing this. Now I ask you, do you believe in freedom of speech? Yes or no? Now, you can say you don't have to platform them somewhere. That's fine. But if somebody chooses to platform them, do you think it's right or appropriate to threaten that organization? Do you think you should call and feed them full of lies? Do you think that deceitful behavior is honoring or honorable or appropriate? And now you might want to defend it because, well, you're just preventing hate. Really? Who has the more hate in their heart? Who's the more hateful person in this scenario? Now, keep in mind, this same person wants to mutilate his child, both chemically and surgically, because it's, quote, affirming. But he doesn't want anybody else to be able to talk about how maybe that's a bad idea. This same person sued the school district because they were utilizing facilities that might have Christian Mm, architecture, Christian art, Christian artifacts present. So, you know, which is it? 
If you're an atheist and you don't believe in God, the fact that somebody else believes in God, why does that offend you? Now, you can poo-poo it. You can dismiss them. I get that. I've seen that. I Okay, fine, if that's what you want to do. But why does that hurt you? How does that harm you? You're asking a church to not be a church. Well, why shouldn't I ask you to not be a jerk? Now, I realize there are always going to be jerks, whether they're jerks in power that have a title and authority or whether they're jerks that are not in power, but seem to lord other over other people by their behaviors and their actions. I can't fix that. I can articulate where I come from and what I believe to little or no avail sometimes, but other times we make great strides. We make traction. I think the vast majority of the general public should they take the 30 minutes out to listen to any one of my podcasts is far more likely to agree with me in principle, if not completely or specifically on what I'm saying than any of this other nonsense. But when the entirety of the government, the entirety of the social power structure, the entirety of the entertainment industry wants everybody to comply and look like and say like they all agree on these things and they are all in 100% lockstep. Let me ask you, what's the better representation of a Nazi? Which is the better representation of communist worldview? Which is the more tyrannical way of viewing things? Just take a minute, think about it, decide, am I really okay with this? Now I am fairly certain there's not going to be a whole lot of atheists that are going to be listening to me. I'm equally certain there's going to be even less people that worship Satan or plain plain old pagans. I want you to know, I don't hate you. I think God sent his son to die for you just as much as he sent his son to die for me. But here's the thing. I'm not going to force it down your throat. I'm not going to require you to take a knee. I'm not going to require you to do anything. I'm going to tell you the same thing that the leftists have been telling the people on the right their entire lives. You can just turn the dial. You can change the channel. You can avert your eyes. It works both ways. So pick your battles. If liberty means something, it means that we have the ability to disagree. It means that we uh, support the idea that people we don't necessarily agree with can also speak. And sometimes it means that we have to defend our very right to speak and our right to be heard by people that choose to come hear us. We shouldn't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. In the end, if you believe like I believe, we win. So there's no reason to lose sleep over any of this. But to bend over and pretend that the world is over and cry our eyes out and suck down those black pills is going to do us no good long term. We're called to occupy. So I'm telling you, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing my part to occupy. So if you're not willing to go make that TEC complaint, if you're not willing to do anything beyond making a phone call, do that. Every little bit helps. Every little bit makes a difference. If you believe in the idea of a butterfly effect, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And until tomorrow, I'll see you on the other side.